What's good frenzied flamers? I actually managed to complete Elden Ring this month so I'm going to slowly make my way through the models that I have. Today we're going to be taking a look into painting the Queen of the Full Moon, Renala. And engage in jolly cooperation. Hush, little Culver. It's primed for contrast paints and we're going to be creating a magic halo effect. You can see I've got a whiter top to a darker bottom using some grey sear at the top and chaos black at the bottom. This way we should be able to apply some overall coating of contrast paints which should react nicely to this priming. So just going to lay out my paints here and first off grab my airbrush which we're going to be loading up with some Leviathan blue and starting with this colour I'm going to airbrush this all over the cloak making sure to get a good covering. Just spraying it up, getting it all over, getting it nice and even. You can use a paintbrush if you want, I'm just using an airbrush just because it saves time and I'm relatively lazy. On top of that I'm also mixing in some Thousand Suns Blue on top just to create a bit of shading and highlighting coming down from the top which is going to sort of like help out with the magic halo effect I'm going to be creating. So here I'm also going to be applying some Flesh Terrors Red to the ribbons on the front of the cloak. Now for the first big job of the model I'm going to be painting on the details of the cloak with some Mephiston Red. I'm going to be using some reference images that I found online and various artworks to try and keep it as close to the original model. Now, this is going to take a while, so I thought I'd touch on the boss fight a bit. I thought it was a really interesting boss in Elden Ring. It, um, it's definitely one of the more original ones, I thought, compared to a bunch of the others. The phase one I thought was pretty pretty cool. The sort of melancholic music mixed with the creepy ass kids. Oh my god, they're so fucking creepy. It's pretty interesting in how she kept resurrecting and rebirthing them, which seemed to be like a big touching point in her backstory and her lore. It all came together quite nicely, I thought. The whole, the whole phase one I thought was pretty cool. I feel like I want to do more over where I painted the Flesh Terror red so I'm just going to go back over it and just wet blend in some red and Abaddon black to create some shading on the front just because I wasn't too overly happy with how the contrast paint settled on it. I think that's better. Much prefer that. Now for her skin, it's very pale in the game so I'm going to be using a blend of Kissela Flesh, Celestra Grey and Wraithbone. Something in Elden Ring that I've seen a lot of people complain about is the sort of repetition used throughout. While I get that, and it definitely is a sort of down point on the game, I just think it's such a vast game, maybe to its own detriment, but the repetition didn't phase me too much because, I mean, you see it in loads of other games and it gives a bit of respite to game developers, I guess, if they can reuse certain assets and reuse certain bosses. But when you get bosses like this and you get bosses like Godfrey and bosses like Rykard, like it does feel much more special, like even though Renala wasn't exactly one of the hardest bosses in the game, the overall aesthetic and the difference between the first and second phase I thought really stood out to me. There was something about the second phase that made me really feel like it was quite similar to the vacuous rom in Bloodborne, because you got the intrinsic use of the moon, like everything surrounding the importance of the moon and the age of stars and things like that, much like you had vacuous rom being like the catalyst between the sort of normal side of Bloodborne, if you can call it normal, to the much darker, fantastical side when the blood moon rises, you know. So I quite liked that. I felt like there was kind of a nice lot of sort of like connection between the games there. Here I'm painting the staff with some Ironbreaker as it's quite a glimmery metal, I think, on it. I'm also going to paint her eyes with some Corax White and fill in the pupils with some Abaddon Black. Eyes are hard guys, eyes are hard. I'm no master at them and they can end up looking a bit funky. From now I'm going to start painting all the decals on her clothes, starting off with the gold hat details and that will be put on with some retributive armour. I actually used her staff a lot in my mid-game build, 
I start, I sort of started off building out the sorcery and intelligence on my character. I whacked up the intelligence and was a full sorcery bitch on it. I changed like three more times as the game progressed and I ended up as a dragon incantation and strength build by the end, which was pretty cool, let's be honest. My favourite boss in Elden Ring, I think... I think Rykard was pretty epic, that really stood out to me, I really had a lot of fun in his fight. Again, wasn't one of the more challenging ones, but it was definitely one of the more epic ones. Like his his cutscene is just fucking awesome. When he pulls the sword out, I mean, how many times are they going to pull swords out of things in this game? It's Something else on Renala that I wanted to touch on was just that she's such a sad tale. Like, I mean, so many NPCs and from software games have sad tales, and as do the bosses. And Renala's no different. She's no exception to this. You know, she was once a master of lunar magic and the ruler of House Caria, who then gets her heart broken when Radigan betrays her and leaves her to become the husband of Queen Marika. Then after her own students realise she's no true leader anymore, they lock her away in the library, left solely to care for the one gift left behind from Radigan, the great rune of the unborn, which then ties into her whole rebirth and rejuvenation. Like, fighting her just feels kind of upsetting, like the haunting music, the dialogue, the creepy ass students. They all play into this melancholic boss fight where it kind of just feels like you're lumping it on on an already defeated mother, like, you just feel bad fighting her. I bought this new gold paint as well recently, this is the Auric Armor Gold. Auric? Auric Armor Gold? It's way brighter than Retributor armor, and it's perfect for bringing some detailing on the sleeves. This model is a bit low poly, so there's not a great amount of resolution and detail in parts of it, so yeah, I, I had to make up with these sort of added details on it. You know, so you're not gonna get the most detailed model in this one, but it sort of gave me a good opportunity to try and up my game on tinier details, which was quite fun to try and do. For the glowing magic effect, I've not perfected this technique, but it's improving with time, I, I hope. First up, I'm loading up the airbrush with some Corax White and creating a white halo emanating from the staff. Then we're loading the airbrush up with some Talisar Blue. This is another new paint I bought recently from Games Workshop. I took a lot of debating back and forth between different blues, but we settled on this one because it's not only is it much brighter than a lot of the other blues, but it's not too overpowering, especially when you mix it with some contrast medium. And I think it gave me the right kind of color I was looking for for the glintstone magic. Now to finish off the stuff, I'm gonna be adding on some even brighter blue with some Lothan blue and applying this just to the tip of the staff. And there we have her. She might be a bit low poly, lacking in resolution, but I'm sure she can still kick my ass with a fat old Comet Azure. Well, thanks for checking out this latest episode, episode 9 already guys. Next week for the 10th ep, we're going to do something a bit different. I'll be showcasing my From Software collection of all the models I've printed and painted and all the board game expansions I've collected this past year. So stay tuned for that, and if you'd be so kind to drop a like, leave a comment and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.